Low oil pressure. Possible cause. Low oil pressure. Corrective action. Check the engine oil level and add or drain oil as necessary. It's not being helpful at all. Ugh. Over the years, we've become accustomed to the many ups and downs of this lifestyle. But just what is it that drives us to continue? What is it that keeps us sane? Wow, you guys having fun? If uh, Brian can't work his magic on this, we have to go back to, to like, port. The winds are here. Hey, we got a fire going. I only took half a bottle of map gas to get it started. <laughs> I'm too hot to think. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think it's going to be amazing. Well. Oh my god! Amateur hour. <laughs> Look at your fuel tank! <laughs> First time sailing, huh? I know, right? Kaza, what's going on? Yeah, we've nicknamed them the conundrums. The conundrums are coming. We don't know what they're actually called. It's pronounced Koro Mwalwins. But I, I like conundrum better. Yeah, and I think they're actually on their way. Yeah. The telltale sign too is we start to see like a little bit of haze over the horizon that way, they're gonna come this way and probably smash us. So we gotta get the deck ready. Anything that could be blown to sea, we gotta take down. Cause it literally, I think somebody said uh, there was a 35 knot gust yesterday, one of the other yeah. boats. The Cormel winds are a unique phenomena of the La Paz area. And they're caused by a difference in temperature between two huge bodies of water. The cooler marine air from the Pacific side of the peninsula is drawn over the desert through gaps in the mountain range that runs the length of the Baja and over the desert to the relatively warmer Sea of Cortez. The mountain gaps compress the winds, which can become quite fierce. While winds of 10 to 15 knots are quite common, winds of 30 to 40 knots are possible. They usually begin in the afternoon and can come on quite suddenly, lasting throughout the night. I haven't seen wind like this in a while. Our canopy down. Yeah, we like struggled to pull it down. It was flat and calm and then it went to I 30 know. knots. But the winds were really the least of our worries as we had other trouble on our hands. What does that say? Low oil pressure. Which is weird. Because I ran it yesterday. Yeah. And I had no problems, and I ran it this morning to fill dive tanks, and I had no problems. Okay, well, of course, I checked the oil. The oil level was good. Well, it was a little bit low. I added some oil. That didn't help at all. So then I read that, uh, you know, if you use the wrong kind of oil, or there's something wrong with the viscosity of the oil, it could cause this sort of alarm. So I went ahead and did an emergency oil change, um, even though I just did it in Puerto Vallarta like maybe three running hours ago. And the reason why this is such a problem actually is because we're running a lot of stuff right now. We have like a freezer, two fridges, uh, 
another fridge going on. We're running the satellite internet, which takes a lot. We're running fans. We've got uh, computers on and we just use an incredible amount of power. I mean, we make a lot of solar and wind, about six kilowatt hours a day, but I think we actually consume closer to nine. And so without the generator running, we're not able to charge batteries. This means we really have to cut down on our electric usage. We can't make water. Uh, and we can't fill dive tanks. So it is a problem. Let's give it a shot. Two hundred, two twenty one, two fourteen. It's sort of varying around a lot. One seventy. Why is it moving around so much? It's weird. Low oil pressure. Possible cause. Low oil pressure. Corrective action. Check the engine oil level and add or drain oil as necessary. It's not helpful at all. Ugh. It's the morning after. Yeah, I mean, I was running it last night and I ran it for uh, almost three hours. I filled four dive tanks, charged the batteries, and then right as I was going to bed, or getting ready to go to bed before I turned off. It shut itself off with the same alarm. And I started running it this morning and everything was perfect, charging batteries, and then it did it again. And so it's way weird for it to be like a mechanical problem. And that means like a wire that isn't connecting all the I time? I really suspect or... the sender. The, what is the, that? The sender? It's, so it's this little thing that, that measures the oil pressure and then it sends it via an electrical signal to this panel. It's this. Part number nine, one nine three zero two four four sender oil pressure. And so it's on the back of the engine. So I literally have to take, it has that soundproof case. I have to take the, the case off, take the back of the case off and then try and find this stupid little thing back there. If I can get the, the actual type of part it is, then I can look it up and look at the specs for the voltage. And then I can test it with like a multimeter and see. And then pot and then order one of those in Mexico when we're in the middle of freaking nowhere. Hot and frustrated, we decided to put the tools down and head out to our local neighborhood pool for a dip, which just happens to be world class and big enough to paddle around on. Hey guys! Enjoy your paddle with mama! You guys having fun? Yeah. Are you fishing so, nuts? So two proper fish at the surface. Did you see a turtle? Yeah. This place is beautiful. So beautiful. Pristine. The only shame thing is that somebody's left like a big plastic like ah, thing with a bunch this. of scrap. Why would you do that? I don't know if they maybe thought that they were gonna like feed the animals or something. A stupid thing to do. I think it's like because they bring day trip tourists here. Maybe and, yeah. I mean, basically they should clean up their. I will take it back. So this is littering, Sierra. Yeah. We need to make sure that people don't litter. It's really bad for the planet. Daphne? Yeah, it was somebody that came in and did it because they don't care about the environment. Don't leave plastic people. Yeah, don't leave plastic people, okay? <laughs> Tell them. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. That's right. Okay, good job. We have decided to try to do a little night dive. Night dive. Night dive! We haven't done a night dive since La Cro La Croix. La Croix? St. Croix. St. Croix, when Nugget was like five like, months old. Yes, yeah, so it's like almost three years ago. Wow! So long ago. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think it's going to be amazing.
dropping into the dark abyss is at first a little uneasy. During a night dive, you can only see the small sphere directly where you shine your light. So your senses are heightened, sharpened, and you're forced to focus on the very small visible area directly in front of you. We dove this spot only a short time ago, but the difference is quite literally night and day. During the night, creatures use the darkness for cover, emerging from their hidey holes to hunt, forage, and breed. Red light is the wavelength that's most filtered out at depths, but with our underwater dive lights, you can see the true colors pop and things become even more vibrant at night. But above all, your experience as a diver is changed, seeing only the spot that falls in your small cone of light. The stillness and sense of calm I always experience is unparalleled during a night dive. You are forced to slow down and focus all of your attention on what lies directly in front of you. Oh, this issue is so horrible right now and the timing of it. We're just not close to any kind of stores or anything. So if uh, Brian can't work his magic on this motor or whatever the problem is, we have to go back to, to like port. Um, La Paz is the closest town, but I really like, we've just been out here for a few days. Like I really don't want to go back to port right now. And I know that it's not going to be like a quick thing. It always ends up like you have to stay for a few days and parts coming in and it's just, let's cross our fingers and see what happens. I'm back at it today. Uh, I borrowed something from Gary. He actually had a pressure tester. So I've got the generator sort of apart and I've removed the um, oil pressure sender. I put this in its place and now I'm gonna crank it over just to verify that we are getting oil pressure. Okay, so it went up to 60 PSI at startup. If it really is that center, which it looks like it is, because we're getting good pressure, I guess I could order a new one and I got to figure out if there's a way that I can trick it into continue running with the faulty sender. That's going to require a little bit of research. All right, we're getting after the old uh, electrical engineering skills here, kind of. It's pretty simple, but we've got a little circuit here, uh, which is some resistors that I borrowed from Gary. Uh, each one of these are 30 ohms, so it should be a total of 120 ohms in series. Brian is still in the engine room. I've always like admired his determination and knowledge about these things. Um, just looking at, I don't know, and even have him talking about it. It's so complicated and it's so many moving parts and so much to know. It's 119, so that's good. Uh, and if we look at our chart on the phone, this says that 120 ohms should be somewhere between 0 and 40 PSI. I'm just in awe about how much he can actually do and how much he can fix. I guess living on a boat, you kind of have to uh, in a way and we all have our specialties, but <laughs> I don't know. I just love that he's so handy and that he can like fix pretty much anything in my eyes. <laughs> so yeah, 
I really, really hope this is gonna work. Oof, it's a scorcher today. It's easily 100 plus degrees in the engine room, no doubt about it. We're down here sweating it out. It's like hot boat yoga, kind of. Let me show you what I've got going on. Got my little box, I'll call it the computer tricker right there. So we should be putting 120 ohms in place of that oil pressure sensor, which should hopefully trick the computer into thinking it's got, I don't know, somewhere between 20 and 40 PSI, if my calculations are correct, and I'm about to give it a shot. Ooh, okay, we're a little high. 238. I was hoping for around 200. A 230, 283, 283 is all right. 41 PSI. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't think that's too high. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run for a few minutes, warm up and see, but uh, if it's too high, then I should be able to remove a resistor and decrease the resistance. Uh, no, no. I'm too hot to think. I'm just gonna see if it works, and if it works, I'm gonna call it good, okay. Well, it turns out that all you need to trick a smart computer is a few very dumb resistors. And we were back in business and our cruise for the season saved. It's worth mentioning that I only felt comfortable with this hack after manually verifying that there was in fact good oil pressure. Otherwise, severe damage due to low oil pressure could have occurred. And now we are off to celebrate with a few beers and a beach fire with friends. Oh, boy scout trick there, Bill. <laughs> yeah. We still can't get it stopped. Can you tell like... I'm from New York City? This is how I start a fire in a desert of dry wood, and I still can't do it. <laughs> oh, you want to put the music on so you can do a dance? Okay, let's turn it up. But the cruising gods were not done with us yet and had a special little treat in store for us that evening. Wow, what a spectacular night. I don't know, just something about sitting here on the beach, like the sunset and the bonfire. I was starting to really feel that we're in the relaxing zone and we're kind of day hopping. It's not like these crazy passages anymore. We can just like have this beautiful spots that are calm and that we can swim and the water is clear and yeah I feel so grateful right now I feel grateful for my family Sierra and Brian I love them so much and we work so well on the boat and we have friends which is amazing Whoa. I'm so grateful for all of you guys that are watching the videos and all of our amazing patrons that are supporting and making this journey possible for us. It's just, I don't know, I just feel so much love right now. <laughs> so thank you to all of you guys out there that are watching the videos and that are supporting us through this journey. It's truly special and yeah, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel, write a comment and yeah, it just helps us out so much. So, so much love for you guys. Just as we began to kick back and relax, we were reminded that letting your guard down, even for a few minutes out here, especially when the Cormel winds can randomly kick in, leads to at best an embarrassing situation and at worst, a near disaster. Okay, we've done a real fail. We didn't notice an all boat thingies are like full with water. Amateur hour. Look at that. The waves, we had it anchored with the stern to the swell. Oh my god! <laughs> Look at your fuel tank! <laughs> and your cans. First time sailing, huh? I know, right? Avenger hour. I'm used to Sierra's portable potty. <laughs> to like pump out the water. Getting up there. <laughs> 
what a fitting end to our day. A reminder that this life comes with so many ups, but also downs. And without one, you could not have the other. So we will continue to make mistakes, break stuff, hack things together, and smile the whole entire time. This is kind of like what cruising does to you. Like we were all sitting on the beach, feeling so chill, like all relaxing, maybe like letting our guard down a little bit. And the cruising gets ya. But as soon as you let your guard down. <laughs> It was a good day though, regardless. Bye. Up next on Delos, we have a very chill sail to our next anchorage. Decide to hike across the island. They're so massive. And teach Sierra that what lies beneath the surface will blow her little toddler mind. <laughs> what did you see? Ahoy Dallas Tribe! In last week's episode, remember, we ran a little contest and we're going to announce the winner today. Yeah, our holiday contest. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy because the response was so amazing from yeah. you guys. We asked you to put in your name uh, and just a little bit of, of a message about what you found out or like how you found Delos or something inspirational. And some of the messages were just so incredible. I've been spending hours I know. reading them uh, over the last couple days. We tried to read through like as many as we could. Yeah. And it was thousands. I mean, I'm still working on it. Yeah. The <laughs> other crazy thing is we got so many messages that it crashed our web server two times. Uh, so, <laughs> so thank the, you. <laughs> so the IT support was working extra on that. Yeah. Um, but should I just go ahead and... Uh, is yeah, the winner? I oh, think oh, so. Oh, first, what, what is the winner going to get? Oh, yeah. So the winner is going to get uh, your circumnavigation t-shirt. Uh, yep. Uh, a, not that one, but an a replica. Exact, yeah, because I haven't even yeah. washed that thing. You don't want that. But a replica, <laughs> a clean, new, fresh one. <laughs> yeah. And their picture on the Wall of Fame shame. Yeah. Which is, which is pretty cool. We're going to pick a winner okay. at random. So literally right these messages just went into a folder on yeah. my email, and I am just going to... Randomly scrolling, 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 okay. scrolling, scrolling, and scrolling, stop. scrolling, stop. Okay, okay, right here. So you're going to read this uh, message now? Yep. Okay. So a big congratulations goes out to Catherine Lamphere. I think that's Whee! how you pronounce her last name. Lamphere, Lamphere. Catherine. Uh, <laughs> and here's the message she wrote. It's very, 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 very sweet. I was just, oh. I just saw the beginning. Uh, it says, hey, my dad has been a quadriplegic for 30 years. Before his injury, he was an avid scuba diver, traveler, and sailor, uh, taking my mom, sisters, and I all over the world. He wow. is sort of obsessed with your videos, uh, and your videos are often used as proof of, of dis in discussions about traveling, which is how I started to follow along. Huh? Uh, right now, he's in the hospital, and I know who would absolutely love to be mentioned in a video. So uh -huh. if I win, please say hi to Mike Hill. Okay. Hi, Mike Hi, Hill. Mike Hill. <laughs> and of course, mention that with his daughter, Catherine, that got him the shout out because he has five daughters. So this is a very important detail. Nice. Um, my husband and I are working on our early retirement, and I look forward to using your videos as references for real life and discussions. Thanks for sharing and let us tag along on the adventure. Oh, that's Aww. so cool. So yeah, Catherine, if you're watching, uh, yeah. we're going to get a hold of you and we're going to send that off. Uh, yeah. to you either you or your dad or whatever you want. We're yeah. going to have you send us a cool picture. We're going to put it on the wall of fame shame. Well, that's amazing. And uh, yeah. yeah, thank you so much. It was a really awesome contest. I think we'll do it again. I would love to do it again, but I also would love to know what you guys want to win. Yeah, if so, you have any cool ideas for yeah. prizes or contests, yeah. let us know. In the comments below. So Definitely. like, write what you would like to win in the next contest down below. Yeah. And, and I want to read a captain's pick. Because I was reading through one, and this message just touched me. Oh, okay. <laughs> touched me. It was really, it was really, really cool. This is from uh, Larry Johnson. He says, God Yul, which is uh, okay. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas in Swedish. Yeah. Uh, I found your YouTube channel by searching for yacht stories on the internet. I live in Kirkland, Washington, where I believe this amazing journey began. Yeah, I lived in Kirkland, mm -hmm. but it actually began sort of in Bellingham, but very close. Yeah. Uh, I used to own a Yankee 38, and she was a great yacht for 18 years. Today, I'm entering the seventh year of fighting stage four colon cancer. Oh, wow. Uh, and for the fourth time, I'm receiving chemotherapy. And next week, I will have undergone my 11th sur surgical procedure. Can you Holy, imagine that? That's crazy. That is just willpower right yeah. there to go through all that. 
During a radiation treatment in 2017, a hospital technician asked me, and he said he asked every patient this question, if I had any regrets in my life. I told him, do not hesitate to do the things you aspire to do. Don't be foolish or crazy, but set about to do those things because you never know if you will get an opportunity to do them later on in life. He said every patient he asked had a very similar answer. Wow. So there you go, guys. Uh, he also says, I tip my hat to you and yours and wish you fair winds and following seas and a happy and joyous new year. Regards, Larry Johnson. P.S. I am half Swedish, too. Oh, <laughs> that was a very <laughs> oh, sweet Oh, man. Yeah, well. guys. Get yeah, out there. So seize many. the day. Yeah. Enjoy life. It's way too short. Don't take your health for granted. Yeah. Very true. Okay. Thank That's you guys it from us for, coming yeah, from, uh, reading all the messages. Can you believe this weather? I know. It's so like amazing. Crazy. It's so different than Mexico. I love it. <laughs> I think right. That was it. That's it. <laughs> okay. It's kind of long. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>